Hey YouTube, Aaron here. I'm hoping I can get some help from you guys with the Monarch lathe. As you can see behind me, we've got the uh, headstock cover off the top and then the end gear train cover off as well as the, the clutch uh, cover. So I had a problem with the machine not getting oil to the, uh, the shoes or, or what they're called on the clutch shiver shifting mechanism. Um, I didn't real I didn't think about how the oil lines were laid out, and so as I was using the lathe, it turns out I was causing some damage uh, over these last couple of months. I only discovered this when I was putting in the last of the new Bijour uh, metering units. So these are these little guys. Got one more here. These are these little guys that actually regulate the oil from the oil pump that goes to. The, um, the different areas inside the headstock and then the gearbox where oil is needed. And so I had uh, one more of those that I needed installed and it came in later so I hadn't put it in. Uh, when I went to put it in last week, I dropped my little um, ignition wrench down into the oil and when I went to go fish it out, I found a bunch of brass glitter inside the oil uh, along with a, a locking washer and a, a little set screw and so oh my gosh what, what's going on here where is this coming from and that's when I realized that the the shoes the brass shoes that actually move the uh, the, the clutch in and out um, have been eaten away by about half so they're they're in very bad shape so I just wanted to get some opinions on um, a if this is the only problem that I've run into or if there's something else I need to do and B how to machine some new ones I actually got a, a quote from Monarch for them and it's not a part that they have so they would have to send out drawings and get someone to make them and then they you know those people make a profit and Monarch make a profit and uh, that would cost me 850 bucks for the two little brass shoes so not not really going to spend that kind of money on this um, the uh, the work is going to be all in removal and, and reinstallation of the new parts more than it's going to be the you know dollar fifty worth of brass in there or whatever so let me uh, take you over here next to the lathe and we'll look inside the headstock at uh, the damage all right hopefully i can explain kind of what's going on here so this is the uh, clutch yoke is what it's called um, it connects on the back of the headstock here to this little arm that goes down a rod to another arm just like it and then that is connected to a rod that goes across the to the front of the lathe where the actual shift lever is for engaging the spindle. So when I push down on the spindle or on the on that lever, it moves the uh, moves the clutch assembly so that the clutch engages and starts turning. So when I l release it, it goes back like that and disengages it. So this is under here is the brake assembly for the lathe. Um, which engages automatically, or actually, I guess this is the brake on this side. I'm not exactly sure if that's just like a counterweight, as essentially all that serves for. So when I got the lathe, um, I cracked the headstock open before I even brought it home, and this tube here was aimed over this way. And unfortunately, I didn't realize, I wasn't thinking about how this was supposed to work. I kind of assumed because the lathe was in such good shape that all the oil lines were in the right spot and it turns out that that was totally not the case. So this guy was just dripping down here when it needed to be in this little trough which feeds oil down into this groove which lubricates the two shoes that actually make this whole thing work. So again, push, in the, push down the lever to engage and those little brass shoes push everything over um, and then they just kind of sit there when you're you know, running the machine. Well, because those things were able to push further, um, they wore out. And you can see, uh, it may not show up on video, but there is a little bit of heat marking on this, um, on that journal there. So what I think caused the problem was two parts. This guy here not filling oil into, into this trough, which uh, lubricated those brass pieces. And maybe just as big was the fact that these two arms that control that they're basically you know on the ends of uh, turnbuckles um, that, that allow you to adjust that and, and get it set correctly both of those were on backward and so before I fixed them there was probably I don't know half an inch of slop 
and this yoke back and forth. So right now there's, you know, an eighth of an inch or something. Um, and before it was just like ridiculous how much slop there was. I don't know if there should be zero slop or if the way it's set now is about right. I'm not sure. Um, this thing is, is a somewhat complicated mechanism. Inside the brake there are, I'm assuming, are, are some sort of friction material discs. The exploded view on the, the parts diagram is, is, you know, not real clear on what each piece does. Uh, but it does give me kind of an idea of, of the order of things and how it's supposed to be assembled. Uh, I don't think you can see it now, but down at the end, basically the complete end of the shaft is threaded and there's a little castle nut on there. And the uh, locking washer that I found in the oil is supposed to be underneath that nut to obviously prevent it from spinning. So we'll have to... I don't know exactly how much disassembly is going to be required to get this yoke off and pull those shoes out. Basically, all I can see is that they're brass with a, I'm assuming, cast iron pin in the back of them that uh, holds them to the yoke and then they, you know, reside in this groove. Um, so yeah, they're, they're pretty chewed up. I'll try and get a better shot of, of how chewed up they are. I do want to replace them. Um, if I, you know, once I change the oil, then there's going to be no fear of damage to the machine because now I know that when I engage the machine and I go all the way, click, you hear the, the clutch engaged, I just pull up on the lever a little bit and that moves the shoes back away from, from that position where they're rubbing. So I can actually run the machine fine the way it is, but I certainly don't want to leave it that way. Um, those brake shoes or those, um, Shifting shoes are there for a reason, and they're that size for a reason. Um, so hopefully that's our, our only problem. So this gives a little better view of how things work. So this oil manifold is what I was working on when I discovered my problem. So I've replaced all five of these uh, metering units with brand new ones. Um, so we should be getting good flow of oil to everything. In the sight glass it shows um, a nice steady glug 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 of oil into the sight glass so the pump is working properly as far as I can tell. Um, so this collar comes off. I'm assuming that's just like a stop collar. And then this shaft here is what that yoke is actually riding on. It's kind of a weird design because there's a keyway in the top and then down on the bottom are, um, it's just milled out and I'm assuming all the way down to the other end of the shaft. So I'm not exactly sure what those are what those um, reliefs are for, if there's something that engages with those. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure and, and won't really be able to tell until we get the thing taken apart. So I don't, I don't know exactly what has to happen in order to get this off. Uh, my friend Jared Bishop and I have been, um, been chatting via text and I'll, I'll pick his brain a little bit more about how to go about this. Uh, he's he's taken his headstock completely apart on his model 60 or series 60 just like this one So I'll hopefully get some help from him on how that goes um, And then let me let me show you a little bit closer up what those shoes look like now And then another pair that's on a different uh, area of the machine to see what they're supposed to look like All right, hopefully this gives you a better look at it. So this is a I don't know a little piece of tubing and I can almost fit that whole thing in the groove that's worn into these shoes. So one on each side, they are curved. Um, like I said, there was a lot of brass glitter down in the oil when I stuck my fingers in there. So I'm pretty sure all of that has happened since I've owned the machine because I changed the oil when I got it. So that's, that's our problem. So that's the um, spindle not engaged position. And then here is how it's how it goes, if you push on it all the way, you can see that the uh, worn portion, you know, it goes all the way to there. And if I back off to kind of pull the tension off of the uh, clutch lever, that's where they sit, which is, you know, the full width of those shoes. So hopefully by having the shaft uh, adjusted here without all that slop in it and getting oil on those parts, um, if I had new shoes, they would then solve the problem, hopefully. Um, if you have any input for me, please let me know. So here's on the middle shaft. Um, these look to be in very good shape. So this yoke is upside down compared to the other one.
but you can see it does the exact same thing. So those brass shoes just fit in that groove and to the right there obviously it engages with that big um, that big gear and if I can grab the right lever here, yeah there we go. So the uh, speed changing lever on the machine on the front of the headstock is what I'm moving side to side right now and those shoes are just pulling that that dog uh, one way to the other. So it's uh, pretty obvious what happened or you know how worn out the other ones are the one that's causing me problems back there and that's kind of what the headstock looks like try not to do too much too much dizzy cam but yeah big giant heavy assembly so the fact that um, in a few hours I was able to wear out that brass isn't terribly surprising to me when they were in the wrong position and not being lubricated but yeah this is again another another set of those dogs or those shoes rather so they're used universally inside the headstock that's how all of the movement happens all right so that's what i wanted to to show you guys and see if anybody had any input for me um, i'm gonna start looking into how to get that thing apart and pull those old shoes off and then I need then I can start measuring them and seeing exactly what I need. Um, I actually ordered some Teflon to do a little experiment and see if that would be a good substitute for the brass and unfortunately the gal that places orders for me um, got a little mixed up and so anyway I'm just going to use some brass that I've got. Um, just 360 brass I'm sure is totally fine that's probably what's in there now. Um, but uh, yeah that's going to be the next step is doing a little bit of disassembly and hopefully I don't have to take that entire end of the end of that shaft off with the brake and everything else because that's going to be um, as Jared put it my, mildly he said uh, it's a pain and uh, I think he's short selling it there it's it's looks like there's a lot of stuff in there and you've got a you know part of the problem is because those brake shoes are supposed to be or I keep saying brake shoes they're just shoes um, those clutch shoes are curved it's kind of like well how do you get them on there when they're pinned to that yoke you know you can't have those assembled and then just set it on that shaft because they you know those those curves aren't going to allow that to happen so um, I'm a little bit nervous about that and exactly what needs to be done in order to get that you know assembly back together I'm sure taking it apart is going to be easy because those things are half destroyed being able to you know have enough room to, to work and pull things apart is probably not going to be too bad um, but getting it back together will be and of course I've got a, another pail of oil on its way to replace all the oil that's in there uh, I'll take the time to um, kind of don't have a choice I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do better than I did the first time when I flushed it because the oil looked totally fine when I first got the machine I was just you know let's replace it because uh, but now that there's contaminants in there I'm going to have to suck out all of the oil that's in there and um, do as much as I possibly can to get those brass filings out. Um, again, they're brass. It's not like there's chunks of hard steel in there floating around against the gears. Um, but I want this lathe to last the rest of my life. So might as well, you know, let's do it right. And then I don't have to crack this headstock open again anytime soon. Um, but yeah, there's my uh, problem. And hopefully you guys can give some input. Thanks a lot. See you next time.